Uh, addiction is a chronically relapsing disorder. It's currently um, characterized as a brain disease as well, which some people still find uh, controversial to this day. But it's characterized by a, a, a series of signs and symptoms that uh, are displayed to varying degrees in, in different individuals. So these are things uh, that many people know about, like tolerance, so needing a little bit more of a drug to get the same effect, uh, needing increasing amounts of the same drug to get the, to get a, the same effect. Uh, withdrawal as well um, and then other signs and symptoms things like being preoccupied with the drug so um, thinking about you know when are you going to be able to drink again when am I going to be able to use again um, things like uh, your in inability to cut down or stop or a sign another sign as well is um, is starting to use a drug and using way more than what you actually intended to and another important um, sign in addiction is having problems with social and occupational functioning and this is sometimes one of the signs that you see first so for example not being able to go to work because you're too hungover or avoiding um, going to a party or something like going out with your friends because you'd rather just use drugs by yourself at home uh, so these are signs that often um, show up very early on and are, and are um, one of the, the criteria for addictions. And uh, another one I should have actually mentioned as well is, is lying about use as well. And, and some people think that they're not expressively lying, but sometimes not being open in reporting that, you know what, I actually uh, wasn't at work. I went uh, straight to the bar early after work or I, I was at the casino. Uh, last night I actually wasn't out with friends. So sometimes people misrepresent um, by not being fully open and that's essentially the same things, not being open about how much you're using or how much time you're spending engaging in these, in these activities. The latest version of the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, which is the fifth version that came out in uh, 2013, it has a new category of substance use disorders. So that includes things like alcohol use disorders, cocaine use disorders, cannabis use disorders. And whereas before we saw them more as um, drugs where th there's abuse and abuse potential and full dependence, now we're talking about uh, addiction on a spectrum. Um, and so you can see very mild forms, for example, of cannabis use disorder to more severe. And you can look at these symptom and sign counts and, um, and gauge the severity of someone's, for example, cannabis use disorder. So the DSM-5 has been careful in its latest version of looking at addictions more on a continuum rather than this dichotomous yes, no. Uh, and also it introduced uh, a non-substance related disorder, which is the very first behavioral addiction um, introduced into the DSM-5, which is gambling disorder. So it's a, it's a fairly profound shift in how we view addictions. We're saying at this point that addiction is no longer just defined by substance taking. So the definition of addiction has changed very recently, as I said, in, since 2013, with the inclusion now of behaviors being conceptualized as addictions as well. Uh, but I like to, to always uh, talk to students and others about the fact that our conceptualizations and the definition of addiction has always been changing and continues to change. Um, initially, I think people focused a lot more on the rewarding properties and the high of drugs. And then slowly, uh, the focus shifted to dependence and ideas of if we could understand more about the chemical c composition of drugs, we would be able to solve addiction. And now I would say in the past two to three decades or so, there's a lot more focus on the harms associated with gambling and the shift from uh, impulsive behaviors to compulsive behaviors. So doing a behavior or, a, or taking a drug that's initially very rewarding, but slowly over time becomes um, more of a habit. You're, often people, when they've been using for long periods of time, they say, I don't even like doing this anymore. I just want to do it. Uh, I just have these strong cravings and urges to, to use the drug and it's really hard to say no. 
There are for for different um, addictive disorders, different things are used. Some people use um, CBT, cognitive behavioral therapy, has shown to be very uh, efficacious in um, in different addictive disorders. Uh, and often you even see a, a sleeper effect as well. So um, sometimes there's no difference at the end of treatment, but then slowly over months, people sort of, I think, digest or incorporate some of the changes. And so sometimes you see um, you see some of the effects coming a little bit later uh, after after treatment has actually ended. Um, so CBT is is definitely used. We also see motivational interviewing um, used in different addicted populations. Um, and often com combining the two has proven to be quite effective, particularly in gambling disorder as well. So I don't think the, the view right now with treatment seems to be a little bit more eclectic. People use a little bit of what works best for one, targeting for one individual, maybe, you know, motivational interviewing might be best for another, it might be a combination of other things. A lot of people find a group support very helpful as well, the social factors involved. So I think there's, there's no one be all end all. Um, cure, but there are treatments that and treatment components that work well for, for different people. And this is the idea that individuals go back again to recoup losses um, when they've been gambling. So often when they've lost a lot of money, individuals will, at first they feel, um, they feel horrible, uh, and then sometimes slowly as they think about it, um, they feel like a win is imminent. What are the chances of me losing 500 times in a row? 